Who would like to go Hi, next? this is Andreas. Hi, Andreas. Um, I'm located in the Netherlands, but I'm German from Berlin. And yeah, I do agile coaching as a hobby beside my bread and butter project management, program management things. But yeah, uh, I'm doing coaching for itself, like personal coaching wherever I can. So I would like to... Uh, to learn from you guys, uh, share my stories where applicable, and yeah, let's see where we get. Yes, hello me, it's Marion. Um, hello everybody, I'm located in Germany too. I'm a project leader and I have uh, some knowledge in agile theory, but when it comes to coaching, there is not so much theory available, so I'm, it's interesting in what's coming now. I hand over to Rum Rami. Hello everyone. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, I am uh, located in uh, Toronto, uh, so calling from over the the sea, and I have to be able to coach uh, the team from time to time when uh, that is required. So I'm constantly looking into expanding my knowledge in that area and. Um, uh, looking forward to learning new things and hear all the shared stories. So thank you very much for having me. And I guess uh, Sasha, I'm not sure if uh, Sasha introduced. An agile coach and scrum master in Frankfurt, Germany. And I, I'm just participating to, I will move on to, let's say Heike. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Um, good evening, everybody, wherever you are. This is Heike, also calling from Frankfurt. Hi, Sasha. <laughs> and uh, I have a, let's say, hopefully solid background as a project leader with an international context, and I'm now evolving into the agile world, um, hopefully, yeah, um, adding that competence level. I'm super curious to, to hear about your experience, Virginia, Virginia and I thank you very much for having me. I am Alices, I am an Agile coach. Now I recently uh, certified in the continuous, continuous uh, education ICF uh, coaching, so I need to uh, practice uh, hours to become a ICF coach. Uh, I, now uh, I work as an Agile coach for Palo IT uh, in Mexico, and I will move soon at the end of the year to Barcelona. Uh, and um, and I think this is the the one of the the the, the, the is the only. Um, I'm Elmar Schwedler. Um, I'm come from Germany. Um, I'm software developer, Scrum master, and agile coach for uh, uh, for our company transition. And um, then I start. I go on. Here's Christine. Um, I'm from Mannheim in Germany. And I'm working as a trainer, change manager, coach, and I also support uh, agile teams. And I'm very interested in um, agile mindset coachings and develop teams to, to have the right mindset to do the work in an agile um, surrounding. Uh, so I'm, I'm very glad to be here tonight. It's Elsa from Berlin, um, too. <clears throat> Many people from Berlin. <clears throat> Happy to be here and um, <clears throat> I mainly work as a um, creative trainer and facilitator. I've also been trained as a coach and my, I'm really interested to learn more about the Agile community and about um, the challenges um, coaches are facing there. So I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks. <laughs> Let's say as an um, agile coach in the last years, in a time uh, when nobody knows uh, what it is. Uh, so, uh, because the main, the, uh, most of the time I was fighting with the, with uh, my colleagues in, in the R&D department, I was also responsible for sales and product management, and IT people should develop what I need. Then I worked for a Swedish company. Uh, developing software too, I was in the same situation that I need to sell uh, uh, the, the products they created. And, um, and this in the um, in area of intellectual property. Mm. And uh, there I learned um, that there is no change, nothing, and I burned down. So now I start uh, to make um, education and business 
coaching in, in the field of um, change, um, change management, consulted and so on. And uh, in parallel, I start to understand more about agile project management. And so I think it is very interesting uh, to attend this meeting to hear the opinion from other. Great, and I'm guessing. I'm in, uh, I'm in, in Germany, sorry, <laughs> and based near Heidelberg. Great, thank you. And um, Pierre, you, you have someone behind you. Indeed, man. Come on, come on. <coughs> Hello, this is Klaus. I'm, uh, uh, living, I'm living in Heidelberg. I'm a project manager, uh, more or less a project rescue person. And um, I have a little bit of coaching experience, but I would like to learn a bit more about it. Thanks. Welcome. Hello. Um, this is Abraham from Mexico. Well, being very specific from Monterrey. And uh, I'm um, working in Latin America and not limited to IT, but I mean, my major experience is in IT, but not limited to that. And uh, I'm a lean agile coach. Right now, I mean, fostering a little bit more two principles, evolutionary change management and service delivery for, for enterprise companies. So that's me. And thanks for inviting me. And um, I just want to learn and, and be part of the community. I'm Patrick, I'm from Frankfurt, uh, or based near Frankfurt. Um, I'm a product owner uh, since 2013, um, working in an agile way, <laughs> experienced an, a tr one transition, still, or right now I'm in an enterprise context. So um, yeah, that's, that's my background and I'm keen to learn a little bit more about coaching. German, uh, living actually in Heidelberg, my working internationally. So I'm doing agile transformation, our change organization development using agile techniques since over 10 years. And before that, I was lean coach or systemic coach. And I developed, I developed a program uh, based, it's called Agile Coaching Program. And I work with you, Virginia, to get the input and to understand what is uh, uh, coaching, also person life coaching. So I'm, I'm also one of your students, and you are also one of mine. That's cool. This is what I what I love to do, and I think there's a lot of things you can share to the community, because these are typically the question we're always facing. That people say, "Oh, agile coaching is not coaching. What are you doing, people? You're not really doing agile coaching, or whatever." And and I think this is a sharing platform so i'm very happy to have you all here and all the newcomers welcome in the family and be free here to talk on whatever you want it's a conversation it is very open conversation that's it i'm pierre that's the only thing going to, uh, now going to have a presentation but we're also going to do interactive exercises who am i and why am i here well, um, so again, my name is Virginia Anderson. I'm originally from the States, which I think you could probably hear from my accent. However, I live in Luxembourg. So I'm, I'm American and Luxembourgish. And I've been over here for a long time, <laughs> quite a long time. And um, I came because I, I play basketball professionally. So when it comes to coaching, I've always had an exposure to the sports side when I was very young and also working in the financial sector and moving into human resources. So I had a lot of experience dealing with coaches and there was a point where I thought, well, I need to find out what is this coaching because I had a colleague who transformed over the weekend from being a grumpy, miserable person. And um, on that Monday, when she came into work, she changed. She was smiling, she was happy. And I said, what is this? <laughs> you know, what is this angle of coaching that can transform people? So I myself have, um, I, I was trained as a, and got certified by a company called CTI Coactive Coaching, which is, um, they're originally out of the States. They're the, one of the oldest coaching uh, training companies, and um, they're out of California, but they're global. So they train people across the world. And I also am a certified coach from a company called CRR Global, which is Organization Relations Systemic Coaching and came from the fold of the, the CTI Collective Coaching Group. 
and they're also a global company who who teaches systemic coaching across across the world and um, and then also from the the International Coaches Federation which we call the ICF I'm a PCC coach I'm a professional certified coach so what that means to people who don't know is I have more than 500 hours of, of coaching and um, and over 125 hours of training so it's kind of it's a category it's a way to categorize um, I would say experience levels of coaching you have um, associate certified coaches who have over 100 hours and you have the big master coaches who have over 2,500 hours of coaching so um, so that is me I, I worked in the banking sector for many years as a trainer consultant and um, and from the agile perspective I've always been incredibly interested in agile coaching and um, when I first met Pierre his play 14 event in 2014 I heard about agile coaching and I was always like what is this this sounds really interesting because I also love business processes I love supporting the business um, but I'm, I'm I'd say I'm really passionate about the people side of it so that is that is me and um, what we're going to do during the session is um, we're going to look at what is what is coaching from the International Coaches Federation perspective and how that can also map back to agile coaching because they're there are absolute correlations between between the two and for me um, working with Pierre I've really seen that um, the ICF I'm going to call it ICF coaching is um, is an added skill set to existing skill sets that um, that agile coaches have and um, and there are different angles to it so so for me to do the session today is really about say okay, skills that are that are an enhancement of your existing skills. So I've, I've chosen three of those, which we're, we're going to, to look at, or tools, I can say tools also. Okay, and um, also uh, I said that um, I, was, I was certified by a company, CRR Global, and the, there'll be a lot of references to, to the book Creating Intelligent Teams, which was written by Ann Rod and Marita Frieshorn, who, um, Marita is the founder of the um, of the organizational relationship systems coaching. <laughs> we say this is also okay. Any, I'm just. Does anybody have any questions or thoughts? We will be doing interactive aspects, and um, I can't say it's going to be overly easy because uh, we're going to have people who go off mute, people who go on to the video and coming back. But we're going to play around with it and see how it works and, and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to start to, I think the basis of really understanding is what is the definition of coaching. I mean, we have so many different types of coachings that are out there. You have your agile coaching, you have the sport coaching, you have personal development coaching, career coaching, you have executive coaching, you have systemic coaching, you have so many, many different things called, called coaching. But um, the nice thing is um, the International Coaches Federation as an international organization has created an actual definition. So it says the ICF defines coaching as a part of clients in the thought-provoking creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and prof professional potential. So it's really about partnering with the person. So we say coaching is not telling a person what to do. And I think there's a lot of times um, there is a misunderstanding out in the world that, um, that a person says, oh, come coach me, and they want to be told. So uh, in a way, it's moving more towards the mentoring side. So Co the coaching definition is about partnering with and supporting the client in finding their own way forward. It's not about it, it's not about telling the person at all, and it's about walking with them on their path. And um, and within the ICF coaching, it's also important to be able to really define what is the difference between psychology, psychology consultancy, and being a coach. Uh, because a lot of people get confused by it. And um, if you're doing individual coaching, it's incredibly important to understand the ethics behind, behind coaching. And if a person has 
issues, emotional issues, we're not trained for it. And to be able to actually to, um, to refer them. So we say a fun way to understand it is a psychologist will help you look back to the past and find out why you cannot ride the bike. A consultant, and if any of you are consultants, it would be take the bike apart, put it together, and tell you then how to ride the bike. Put it together and tell you how to go ride it. The coach will help you on the bike, ask you what, your dest what is your destination, and ride with you until you can ride alone with confidence. So I think it's a nice way of saying really what is, what is, what is coaching. And, um, and it's, it's okay to let go too when a, a person knows that they can go on their way. And an important point also is the coaching is about coaching the person the now, not about going back to the past. And it's about connecting to who you are and being able then to, to find and empower yourself to move forward. So, um, so those are the definitions coming in from um, the, the ICF. The ICF also has um, core competencies that um, when you, whenever anyone is taking any kind of um, coaching training, it is really to follow these core competencies. And, um, and what we'll look at today is establishing the coaching agreement and, um, and coaching presence. And then bringing in how do you communicate effectively. And um, I've chosen these skills because I've, I've felt that um, these are not easy ones to shift into. And, um, and they're part of the, the core competencies. Also, um, Pierre, Pierre and I, we were asking, you know, what are the core competencies behind Agile, the Agile world? And uh, Pierre had noticed that, that is, it's close to being the same almost the same so it's um in a way it's not different being an agile coach versus being like an international icf coach okay any questions on that so um, far it's a lot about empathy that's my point of view yeah. it doesn't matter if it's agile or personal coaching it's a lot about empathy at the end of the day and try and having a mindset which is not about yourself and putting yourself first it's a lot about trying to see the purpose and the needs and the values of, of your coachee at the end of the day. And it doesn't matter if it's a team or it's an individual or it's a whole organization. It all comes to, to be the same. Absolutely. Yep, that is so true. And um, a lot of times we talk about, um, in many different coaching schools, <laughs> where we say um, the different levels of listening. So you can have, we say level one is where you hear something and then it goes into your head and you think about it, it's about you. Uh, you have level two where you're connecting with another person and it's kind of like balancing back and forth and constantly sharing. And then there's level three, which is stepping in and reading what is happening in the environment. You know, what is, you know, looking for double signals, looking for the person. And um, the coach is not normally in level one. <laughs> Because that's again about yourself, and, um, and and having the empathy and understanding what's around you, and partnering and walking walking with the person. And um, anyone else have any comments or questions? Um, on the same, if the coach is part of the system, then he shouldn't be coaching the system. He needs to be external of the system to have a different perspective. Otherwise, he might be e even part of the problem instead of part of the solution. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. I, I myself was also working internally and um, I was doing internal coaching and there was a point where I knew we had to bring in somebody from the outside because it was just too close. And, and that's also where the ethics side of coaching are really important to understand is to also get rid of your ego and say, I need to bring somebody else in. You know, I need to bring someone with a, an external view. Absolutely right. Anyone else, what, any thoughts? What's about the conflict of interest, ma'am? So my question is, when you're an internal coach, it's like, like what you're just telling us, is, is, that, is it an issue about conflict of interest? Or maybe having not the enough latitude to, 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 to get your job done? Meaning if you try to coach and, and your boss say you can't make it, so you're blocked. Yes. It's a gremlin. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. Being aware of the conflicts of interest are incredibly important. So for example, if you're a systemic coach and you're coaching a team and you're coaching the manager at the same time, there can be a conflict of interest because you have too much information and it's about having the trust of the system whenever you're, you're doing the coaching. Now, um, in my trainings, they said you can coach the manager or the CEO, and then when you're finished, then you can coach the team, and you can do it separately. But it's really, really important to understand the relationships and the impacts. And um, sometimes you can be hired by a company, and they might be hiring you to coach a person out of the company. So, um, and the question is, do you want to take this type of coaching? Maybe you're getting paid good money. But, um, but the thing is, uh, it's really important to set exactly what, are you, what is your contract, who is your sponsor, who's, going to, who's hiring you, and also that when you have your coaching is that you will not reveal any information about those coaching sessions. So it's very important to, um, to have confidentiality between those two because sometimes you might have somebody who comes up and says oh come in and now what's going on <laughs> you know i want you to get this person to perform or or something else and um it's in very important to be very clear up front in the beginning this is how i'm coaching and this information is not going to be passed to you i can give you an update a generic update but i cannot pass on information because the confidentiality is incredibly important in, in um, defining the risk. Uh, or if you say you, you and cannot. Same. And it might be even that mm -hmm. if uh, a, t a team leader is coming to you asking to coach a certain person with a certain directive, that at the end of the day, you may take that role, but at the end of the day, the coaching for that coachee might uh, go in a complete different direction. And it's none of the concern of the, the one who did uh, ask you for doing the coaching because of the confidentiality. So it, it's really, really a lot of, about trust. I mean, at the end of the day, there might be a point where you're sitting together with the one who was asking you to do a coaching and your coachee at the beginning yep. to, to, to clarify the contact, uh, the, the contract in a way, the scope, and that there's a certain transparency that, that everyone is in alignment. And then you have certain updates or the coach, he gives updates. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's all about confidentiality. Come, oh, come on. This, this word, Chuck. <laughs> Confi the, thank you. Um, <laughs> about that one. And, and the trust. So don't break the trust to the coach. That's the main rule on, on everything around coaching from my perspective. Absolutely. It's so true. Also, let's say you have a referral or, or someone has referred you and or there's referrals going in between also being very transparent that um, somebody might be getting commission for referring you or vice versa because it's really important to know that um, who is being referred is somebody who can do the job and it's not just for money if that makes sense so there, there's a lot of um, complicated relationships that can pop up and it's um, it's really important to set the groundwork in the beginning and and to put them into your your contracts and into your coaching agreements uh, otherwise later down the road you could have issues so for example you might be coaching somebody in a company and they say that oh well i plan on stealing some money so something very unethical is happening and could be breaking the law so we are, as coaches are obligated to um to report so it's also very important to say up front in your, in your agreement, if there's something happening here, you know, uh, this is just from an ethical perspective, I, I would be obligated to report it. So it's, it's quite important to have this very, very clear and up front. Okay. Any other points or questions? Maybe just a question. So we talked a lot about um, responsibilities and the, the roles. So um, it might be the case that this is something which 
uh, which you also bring up, but is there some illustration about this, like like a power interest matrix or something like this? It can be, that would, I would say would be a part of designing what you're going to be coaching the, the group on. So if you're doing a, a group coaching. So for example, what type of roles that they might have, roles, internal roles, and, um, and defining that within, within the group. But also it's important to know exactly who is your sponsor, who's the coachee, and you're the person who's doing the coaching. So, so there's, there's the individual side and then there's also the, the team systemic side. So I'm going to move on. And um, what I'm going to focus, I would say on the skills from a systemic coaching perspective. So, um, and you say, what is systemic coaching? And um, it's really looking at the, the team, the group as a system. So um, I have a definition here and it's the basic principle of relationship systems intelligence is the redirection of focus from the individuals within the system to the whole system as an entity itself. And this shift in focus enables leaders, teams, organizations to move beyond personal concerns, petty conflict, to a positive and generative group identity. The strength of the team's identity provides resilience and the resources necessary to navigate the constantly changing challenges, challenges organizations face. So um, it's, it's looking at whatever group that is in front of you is coaching the system as a whole and not as separate individuals. So we don't look at, we, the individuals are there, they have a voice, but we see what is happening within the system. And it's, um, it's, it's, like, it's like you have many individuals in chaos who are moving and working and, and, and the power of being able to move those individuals into one force and seeing what is happening within that system and how it can actually move forward. This is a hard shift for, um, uh, for myself, I have to say, even though I coach basketball and I'm a referee for basketball too, being able to step back and really see all these groups of people as a functioning system, as a moving system. So you could say a school of fish, you know, how they can move and how they can float and how they can how they, they change and adapt. We're watching a flock of birds be able to move and change and seeing what is happening within this entity. Because if you think about it, systems are incredibly powerful and it's um, how you can work with those, those systems. Okay, and, um, and the objective, you have an objective, but you let go to see what is best for the system. So as a systemic coach, what we are doing is we have an objective that we want to work on. We have different tools, but the thing is to absolutely let go and allow the system to go in the direction that it wants to go in, which is a hard thing <laughs> to do, <laughs> especially if you, if you like to make sure, oh, we have to achieve this. It's about allowing the system to function and to work. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, we were, I, was, I was in a team, so I was within the team, and we had a um, systemic coach, and um, they said, okay, we're, we're in a cer certain program. We did a constellation. We drew what, that, what, that, um, what the system looked like and all the interrelationships and what was happening now, and that worked fine. We put it on the wall, everybody saw all the different views. And then um, she said, okay, now let's draw the same constellation, but what would the future look like, you know, with this group? And um, it was amazing how people didn't want to do it. Fear popped up. They were just, there was just so much going on. People were blocking. And, um, and as a systemic coach, she read the system where the system said, no, we cannot do it right now. So what she did was, is she said, fine. <laughs> she stopped. She said, we won't go further with this specific place where we were in, in, um, in the course. And, um, and she said, we'll check it out tomorrow morning and see what happens and recheck into the, the group. So she had the courage to hear the system say no. And, um, 
and that evening people talk, things happened, and um, and it was quite quite interesting to watch because that next morning we were actually able to move forward. So the system was able to fix whatever it was and be able to move forward. So it's having the courage to let go and hear and see what is happening within the system. System, I mean team or group or relationship. Okay. Any questions about that? We're referring to the system always being a whole team or a group. Yes. Uh, would you say that an individual as being part of a system also could be the focus of the coaching? Uh, they can be because they might be an important voice that needs to be spoken within the system. You know, okay. so you might. And how do does that transfer into the system? Yes, yes, it does. So, for example, uh, you might have a quiet person who never speaks, and it's about seeing the system, which we'll we'll go into the skill around this. Seeing the system, you have a large group on one side talking, talking, talking all the time. But then being able to see the view of the person who doesn't, who's quiet, who's not saying anything, and allowing them and supporting them, being like a mattress for them to be able to speak what needs to be said from their perspective and being heard and helping them be heard. It's um, really important because then the system, they're part of the system. And if they're not being heard, then the system technically can't be as strong or maybe it can't move forward. Uh, I have a question, Virginia. I don't know if you can hear, hear me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I changed my earphones. Uh, we, as a coach, we, we, we just, just tell, let me know if I am wrong. But when we are coaching in one one, uh, we we, we we say that the the all the, the knowledge is, is inside the being it's inside the people so yeah. so you don't mentor him you just ask questions to to understand uh, to to help them uh, 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 get the answer by themselves it, when when we are talking about coaching a system in a, but but when you're talking with, with with a with a company which is something really big uh, how you can coach a system Without uh, uh, without uh, uh, saying them what to do, because you, you because you as a coach of the system, uh, you 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 just uh, they they need to understand uh, uh, like other other software of, of the system, like other things. But but it's 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 not it's, I, I see it I I can see uh, how it, it, there are a lot of differences between between when you're coaching a team that when you're coaching a company of thousand of people so what, what do you do without uh, what, what, what is your perspective here in, in the coaching uh, with, as an agile coach when uh, in, uh, uh, and, and not uh, mentoring them so much or I don't know how if I, I, um, I explain myself correctly you know I understand uh -huh. yeah um, so for example individual coaching you ask person to work on you know what are in, in, in what time frame and as you coach them, not only asking questions, you're reading all different aspects and you're letting that person move in the, the direction they choose. Of course, you have an idea of what they first asked that they want to, to, um, to work on, what their goals are. And, but if they don't want to go in that direction, they don't have to. Um, and when it, so the difference in systemic coaching is where you will be hired by a company and they will say, Oh, let's say, um, I'm just going to use an example. Uh, we have a one day workshop. We need to work on communication skills and getting a department that has three sub departments to communicate better and work together. So, so you have an objective that you, you need to work on. You need to help them communicate better. And um, so you create different tools, different aspects that allows the system move forward so for example so it's yeah you have your agenda you could say and we're going to work on these different aspects but if there's a point in the system where for some reason the system says I cannot communicate with this team <laughs> it doesn't work it's never gonna work they start blaming they start doing all these things then I would hear the system and I would maybe grab another tool and say, let's work on, we have potential toxins popping up, for example. 
So we have to be agile. <laughs> we have to be flexible. And I'm talking from a systemic perspective, a pure systemic perspective. Okay. Because, um, because I know from the agile perspective, you also have a process or you have a way of the company has big objectives that need to be achieved. And there, there might be consultancy directive aspects that, that come into it. But um, pure systemic side, it is, yes, I have to, my goal is to improve communication and I'm using these tools to allow the system to find its voice to, to communicate better. I'm not gonna tell them you have to communicate better because it can be rejected. That makes okay. sense. Uh, yeah, one, one other question. What, what if the system wants to go in a wrong direction uh, and you as an agile coach or you're as a coach or systemic coach, you know that this direction is wrong. You, you let them fail in that direction, even if you know by your experience that this is wrong? Uh, I would I say let them fail? I would, um, I would highlight different voices different perspectives if it, you know if a team says no i don't want to do this well there's some sort of voice there but then is it realistic or is it toxic behavior? is it something else so it's it's to find and, out what um, is that's right. where you, yeah go ahead and that's where you can put in your own perspective and and putting an intervention in a way like i had the experience i had the experience somewhere else you know, give them uh, uh, an anchor to, to think about of the other perspective, to make a connection to their own situation, yeah. and then give them at least a chance of a way out while it's being still an offer and not a DA being told to. So this is what the, what the main thing is about coaching, giving offers and make the, the, the attendees, uh, giving them the chance to take their own decision because they will reject if you're, they just will be told. And then, then, then they're not going to be motivated. Then they're not going to be engaged. And you can see the energy dropping. It's amazing when, when you can get a group to see um, to be a decision or a strategy, how, how the energy just changes. It's amazing. And yeah, and, and, and sometimes I have to say, sometimes failing is also an option is maybe they have to experience experiment uh, failure which is okay i think yeah and then then also the word failure can be very interesting from a cultural perspective and to be aware of that so for example french culture failure is is a no-go but people need to learn to fail <laughs> so i'm american we love failure <laughs> you have to fail to learn I'm a sport person. If I can't fail, then I will never be the best I can be. So also cultural perspectives have to be, be you have to be aware of the cultural perspectives also within the system. I, I would like to say here, but, but there's, there's a lot of but, of course, but there's one but when, when, when a company uh, uh, is paying you as a coach, they, they don't want you to fail. If, if, you, don't, if you are not... Uh, 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 if you if you are not uh, uh, doing doing things that that will help them, or or if you are you are not making uh, results, uh, then then the company can can fire you because you are not you are not doing things correctly. But but you, you have a dilemma because for, for one part is saying you okay let them to experiment and to and to fail, but in the other part uh, the part of the mindset of the company is, 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 is expecting you to solve them uh, things uh, without making mistakes. So that is uh, a, a, a difficult dilemma when, when you're doing agile coaching in an organization. Oh, it's so true. And, and um, uh, just think about it. You might go into a, a company and you feel that they don't have your values. Will you also have the courage to say, I'm sorry, but I need to terminate the contract? So it, it's not easy when it's about money and um, where you, you, need, you need yourself to survive. What, what choices do you make? You know, do you say yes, yes to the, <laughs> to the senior management? But the nice thing is 
if you're in a company and you're hearing a voice and you're able to, to get that voice out and have the senior management see, it is unbelievably impacting. And I've had that quite a few times where, because if you think the, the management is in the system. So if you're doing it, like for example, you do a team coaching and, um, and you don't have the stakeholder in the room. And, um, and they're, they're saying you have to do, you have to execute this. And the system is saying no. But then if you think the, um, the part of the system and they need to hear what's going on, and then they can make choices because the system is telling them it doesn't work. Um, I can give you an example where um, I was doing a team coaching and we did a, a tool called a deep democracy where you have a topic, it's chosen by the, the group, and then people take roles. And Pierre and I were gonna try to do that in one of the sessions. But you take a role and you state the role. And <laughs> Then after that, you, um, the people, if they agree with what the person says, then they walk towards them. If they disagree, they walk away. And there was one organization where they have a lot of um, short-term contracts. And um, the system chose the topic, short-term versus indefinite contracts. And you had a person take the role of the indefinite contract and says, I feel happy, I'm secure, I'm not worried. And you had two people walk towards it. Then you had a person say, contract and I love the freedom you had two more people work towards that person <laughs> then I had someone say I'm a determined contract I'm frustrated I don't know what to do I've moved my family I'm I'm afraid and you had 40 people move towards it and um, and the the um, the sponsor of, of that of that workshop was like oh my god why didn't you people tell me? I didn't know so many people were impacted by this. And um, this was an organizational decision to have determined contracts and indefinite contracts. They, they couldn't control, they couldn't make a change. What is really interesting is the psychological contract or contract, because you, you, we need to establish as an agile coach, what are the rules? And if those rules are broken, uh, some of the rules are, 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 are not the minimum to, to work, then, then we should say it's done. Uh, we, we, I can work in that way. Exactly, and being able to reveal to the system that the, it's important to the people. You know, it's um, it it the voice is important. And then, of course, there's again, there's the choice. Comment. Yeah. There's one comment I would like to add. Um, don't judge what's going on within the system. Stay out of judgment. Exactly. Don't exactly. take positions. Don't say this is right or this is wrong. You facilitate, you make uh, interventions, you ask questions to let them come up with solutions or ideas or that movement, what we just heard about, which is really powerful. Um, so this is where it's coming from. And it's always you as a coach to decide if you can progress with what you see according to your own stance and values, or if you want to step out. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, you as a coach may need a coach for an individual coaching to get over the situation where you don't feel that you have all the answers yourself. Maybe a coach can help you on finding your own uh, perspectives. Yeah, I 100% I agree. And also as coaches, the amount of heavy energy that we absorb from a system, you know, from a work environment, from a, a toxic environment, from um, the stresses of our life. Um, it's incredibly important to have your own coaches to be able to get rid of this energy and to move it out because it will, it will affect you. Um, it, it, for example, you have, um, my brother is a minister in a church in the States. And um, he's the first person who walks into a house where, there's been a, where there has been a death, which means he's feeling the heavy energy of the family. If he doesn't have that access to get rid of that, that heaviness, he's going to become stressed. So yeah, I absolutely agree. It's really, really important to have that avenue for yourself to be able to help you move forward and find, find that positive energy for yourself. 
I'm going to, um, to look at what skills that are needed in systemic coaching. And um, I've just chosen um, a couple because I've seen that these are ones that are not, not always used. Now I'm going to, um, the, the ones where you, you can really create a shift within a system, so I'm gonna focus more on systemic coaching now, is um, having a designed partnership. That is um, the first one. And um, you know, designing what is, how are we partnering together <coughs> and how do the, does the system wanna to partner together? You have um, the next one, which I'll also talk about, the system to itself. You know, being able to reveal what is happening within the system. Um, and then revealing the emotional field. So like you said, we're not telling the system what to do, we're revealing what's happening in the energy and the emotional field. And, and what we're doing is we're giving information to the system to be able to move forward or to move in a direction it wants to move. So um, the first one to talk about is the designing, designing a partnership. So creating the partnership contract at the beginning of any project, of any workshop. And, um, and the questions that you're asking is to the people, what atmosphere do you want to create in the team? So you're asking the group, what atmosphere do you guys all want to have? You know, um, how do we want to be during the workshop? You know, do we want to be happy? Do we want to challenge each other? What, what do we want? What's important for the team? And then another great question, make this team flourish, you know, really just grow to, to be able to move forward and to get that down, to write it down on a flip chart so it's there in front. And, um, and to ask the team, do you agree? You know, to get agreement. And then a, a major question, is um, how do you want to be together when things get difficult? <laughs> you know? Yeah, and you can refer back to the points that, that from above. You know, what do we need to do? Oh, we need to be transparent. It's okay to question. It's okay to fail, for example. And, um, and again, you write that down on a flip chart and you have it as a design partnership. Then you move to what are your expectations from me as the coach or facilitator? How would you like me to be with you? What are your expectations? And then you write that down also. They may say, challenge us. I want you to, um, to be tough, <laughs> you know? I want you to be a listener. So, so again, we write it down and then after we say, do you agree? Does everybody agree with this? And we get, all, we get full agreement. And it's something that you can always go back to in case you have difficulties. And it is a working document. You can do it from one day to the next. You can always adapt it, you can change it. If you have new persons coming into the system, it's something you can always, always rework. And um, so what I like to see, because I've, I've, um, I've seen a lot of people who think a design partnership is defining objectives and purpose. No, <laughs> it's not that. It's not explaining the agenda. It's not telling what is the process for the day, the typical things we're used to. It's about how the system would like to be and act together. And it, at times it will tap into the values of the system. So it's, you know, it's a design partnership. This is how we want to be and how we want to work and act together. And these are the, the aspects that are important for this group. And um, what, so again, you have a lot of really great benefits from it. The, the coach facility, they can revisit and go back to the agreement if, if times get tough. Guys, you told me to challenge you. I'm going to do it now, <laughs> you know. And um, Okay, also when there might be difficult aspects or things that are happening, you can always refer back. You know, we said we would be open and not closed. You know, I'm seeing everybody closing down. You guys agreed to this. Um, also, it allows for people's voices to be heard and not dictated to. Yeah, it's like, this is how we want to work. This is what's important to us as a system. It's not, I am going to, to do this as a coach or facilitator. So it's, it's very, it's, um, it's really, really powerful. Okay, any questions about what that is? 
Have any of you used design partnership? In, in individual coaching, you do a designed alliance, like how do we want to work together? But have any of you guys um, used a design partnership? I hear nothing. I did, ma'am. Yay. <laughs> Pierre and I had a lot of fun discussing it <laughs> when we were looking, and it's, um, it's, it's incredibly important to use. So um, we're, we're going so, uh, to yeah. Yeah. Sorry, uh, this is Rumi. Uh, I have a quick question. I, I believe that I'm a little bit confused. Uh, um, and um, the reason for my confusion is that when we're doing coaching, we're coaching the person, not the problem, right? Uh, and uh, with your example of when you said that you're being hired by the manager, to uh, get understanding on the problem or how they feel, right? So there is a purpose and there is a problem. So you're facilitating and not coaching the team. So it, it's, so this exercise that happened, the constellation exercise that you've done mm -hmm. with the team, is a pure example of facilitation, not coaching, right? No, it's coaching. Um, no, it's coaching. It's coaching. It's not but, facilitation. But you facilitated the uh, the process of discovery where everybody is. So uh, it's a pure. So how you're creating the process that inspires those the, the person uh, the people uh, people's potential how you're bringing it up right so the constellation exercise is a pure facilitation to right to see where we are and understand the things when on the other hand we have a the manager who, who has a problem and uh, we're focused on the problem so somehow it's difficult for me to associate the systematic coaching with the principles of coaching especially when it comes to the agile environment yeah. right yeah, it's difficult <laughs> and um that's why i've chose these um the three aspects because that is the shift because yes you have a problem you have to solve it we need to get it done and many times we look at the individuals or, or we, um, we look at the team and we tell them, okay, how do we do it? Yes, let's go take care of that. Like you have the answers. In systemic coaching, you have, yes, I have a tool that I'm using. I'm using a constellation tool. And um, however, what I'm doing is, is that I'm getting the individuals to create the tool, like in a like chaos, they're all creating it individually. And then what I'm doing is I'm bringing it together from a systemic perspective. I'm getting the team in the system to see when you put it all together, what are you seeing? And then I'm turning and I'm, I'm looking at the team and seeing all of their interactions. I'm, look, I'm watching the, the school of the fish move. I'm, I'm watching, well, one thing I didn't talk about is uh, we call it edge work. And it's um, like climbing up a mountain. You have normal behaviors that you're using every day. And then all of a sudden you have to change. And it's like, ah, I'm at the edge of the mountain. <laughs> you know, I don't want to jump. Ooh, I don't. Oh, no. You know, and you have the people who jump, who want to change and develop a new behavior. You have the people who jump and run back. And you have the people who just get blocked and have a really hard time and maybe need a small push. And that's the stuff that we're looking for as a coach. So it's a major mind shift into, I know my objective, I know what the problem is, but the thing is, I'm not gonna fix it. I gotta get the system to figure it out. And so I'm using these tools and aspects. So it's a, it's a big shift. So here, for example, design partnership is, the amount of times I do it and people look at me with blank faces, <laughs> you know, like, what do you mean? You want me to talk in the beginning of a workshop and tell what I want? And you're asking all of us? This is weird. You should be telling me what my objectives are and how I need to go out and, and, uh, and it's, it's a different dynamic. And I will, I will say, you do a design partnership and then you shift to what is the objective and, and practice 
purpose and what we're going to work on. So you, you do all those things also, but it's a shifting, it's a shift. Does that help you? Uh, okay. Yes, uh, uh, a bit, because I'm, I'm very familiar with the systems thinking and how the system works and, and how everything depends on each other. So uh, for me, it's a little bit of um, uh, challenging to comprehend how um, we're tackling one piece of the system uh, that, let's say, uh, the manager says that this is the piece that we have to train when uh, this may not be really the um, the key point of the system that has to be, a, you, you know, uh, yeah. worked on, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there are a lot of things when we use system um, thinking and, and the principles, there's so many things involved mm. that yeah. having one person deciding, uh, oh, this is where we need to work on to improve, uh, when other pe other pieces are not involved is a little bit of a, <laughs> but that's, yeah. let's get, get moving on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yes, a hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> because remember we're dealing with human beings and the, you can't really control a human, mm -hmm. you know, so it's yes, absolutely. And the thing is you probably have a lot of wisdom because you're seeing things from a different perspective. And, then, and the, the question is, does that manager who's telling you what you have to do see also all of the perspectives? Mm -hmm. And the question is, how do, you, how do you bring that about? Okay, so um, what I'm, I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try with all of you to do a designed partnership. You know, for, for uh, the rest of the meetups, the Praxis meetup sessions. And um, and I'm going to ask you the simple questions and I'm going to see, see what all of you like to do. And the skills that we have as a coach would be questioning skills, listening skills, maybe negotiation skills, facilitation skills, using your intuition, and also we say meta skills and meta view to see what is, what is happening. So I'm, Pierre, do you think I should, we should write it down? Absolutely. Would you like to write it? Yeah. In the Do you want to write it down? <laughs> Are you good at writing? Hello? Pierre, how much time do we have? Uh, as long as much you want, but until eight. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll, we'll go through this. So I'm curious for all of you. Link to the Agile Praxis, these, meta, these um, meetups. How would you guys all like to, to be? How would you like to work together from a group perspective? What is happening here? <laughs> That's a very good uh, uh, argument. Sorry, my battery is empty. Sorry, I have to leave. So now people are leaving. Yes, I got you, I got you. Because it's now time to work, you're leaving. Okay. <laughs> so you can take your, your stuff off mute if you're listening. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> How would you guys like to? Yeah. What? Or and let me ask you first. What atmosphere do you want to create within this system? Because we are a system that is functioning. Happy environment. Happy environment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. An emotional environment where emotions can take place. Okay. An emotional environment they can take place. Yeah. Yeah. Humans are complex beings. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm actually writing this because I don't know if happy, happy, be happy. Diversity of thoughts. Passion. 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 Elmer, what did you say again? I'm writing it down. Uh, uh, an, environment, an environment where the emotions can take place. Okay. Anybody else? 
in a room full of love, passion, oh. with butterflies. <laughs> a war zone. <laughs> war zone, okay. <laughs> You mean a war zone of discussion? <laughs> yeah, to be honest, it's like an agile system. This is also, it uh, has another name, it's called a kindergarten. <laughs> okay. A kindergarten with a strong boss, as is typical in Germany. <laughs> yeah, because the boss is not considering himself to be part of the system. That's the point. <laughs> This is you, make, you have to make clear. <laughs> yeah, I have my own trick. I trained, uh, I trained uh, Virginia on it. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. I use my Jewish mom approach. Is You have to piss people off. It's like your mother, you know? Oh, you didn't call me. It's your fault. And it's kind of, you, you're playing on emotion. It worked well. Shall I add, be ironic? Sarcastic? <laughs> I can't spell it. <laughs> no, the problem is, as a coach, we cannot be neither ironic, neither sarcastic. Okay. Our language has to be pure. Never. <laughs> that we have to accept emotions. That's the trick, is accepting also that people have a bad behavior, and this is okay, too. So accept bad behavior. Can I say accept everyone's view? Anyone else would like to add? Andrew, any okay. idea? Yeah, and I'm also curious, how would you guys like to flourish as this group to get to make it amazing, to learn new things? Is there anything we would need? Alcohol? Okay. <laughs> Well, Elmer's in a car, so I don't think that's a good yes. idea. <laughs> <laughs> huh. He's I'm, Germany. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I am talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so that kind of that gives you an example. First part of it, and then the question would be, you know, if it starts to get difficult, let's say nobody speaks, nobody goes off mute. What do we need to do? What do we need to access to help us move forward? Any ideas? So if my system or my team is virtual, we have to see faces. Okay. Yeah. To have a, 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 an emotional connection. Anything else? Take a break, give them coffee, make an energizer. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. M making an energizer game like Lucky Salmon. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, that one is great. I like it. I like it. Yeah, and to figure out how to do it virtually. <laughs> that would be fun. I just say high five. <laughs> yeah. Do high yeah. fives. You use a special presentation with cat pictures for the virtual uh, presentations. <laughs> And, and, and threaten them to show them as long as uh, they are still quiet. Okay. And keep going till they start to laugh. Just make a joke out of it. Okay. So as we see, we have a bit of a shift there. <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, yes. So even if you say if it's a difficult environment, it can start to become fun. So it can show, show the shift. And what do you guys expect from Pierre? <laughs> Not from me. <laughs> Can you rephrase the question, please? Yeah. And what would you guys expect from Pierre or myself when it comes to facilitating the meetup for today or for the future? <clears throat> to open a space for okay. ideas, Creat creativity. Um, what about asking the participants about their expectations of the meetup? Okay. So, um, so this gives you an idea of what is a design partnership. And and how it works. And you reflect it back to the group and then um, ask, does everybody agree? Yeah, so it's, again, it's a voice. It's something that is important uh, when it comes to already bringing out the voice of the system. 
Okay, so I'm going to now reshare. Okay, so we looked at design partnership. You have different skills, you're listening. And you can see at times I started to ask, oh, what's interesting, I see what's happening here. Everything is in mute. So what can I'm doing is, yeah. Excuse, can you start the presentation mode so this is a, a little bit more. Sure. More clear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always I've, afraid. I have just a mobile phone, it's, oh, it's small. Yeah. <laughs> Is it there? Thank you very much. Great. So um, what we do also as a systemic coach is we reveal the system to itself. And what we do is we step back, we take, we say a meta view, and we shift our perspective to the entirety of the team or the group or the system, however you want to call it. And um, what you're doing is you're holding up an imaginary mirror to the system to explore exactly what is impacting the system from inside and from outside. So um, you reveal it to itself. You're, you yourself are looking for mixed signal, signals. You're looking for um, maybe a person, a side who's not speaking, is talking all the time. You're, you're increasing your intuition, awareness, and actually your vision. And um, what happens is you become aware of um, what is happening there in that system and, and you reveal it. So, um, and um, as a systemic coach, what we're doing is our belief is all systems are inherently intelligent and creative and can, can bring themselves back into to balance. And this awareness that you're bringing out can help that system self-correct and, and go back into, into balance. So, um, and it also, it allows the voices to be heard that comes out and that people are, have the chance um, not to be dictated to, but to see what is happening within the group, within the system, because systems are very, very powerful. And um, it's, um, it's not the easiest thing to do because a lot of times we're busy telling them you know, telling the group what needs to be done or we're implementing a tool and, and sometimes we forget to step back. So the, the question around, oh, I'm putting together a constellation, I'm facilitating. Well, what we do is the facilitator many times doesn't see what's happening in the system and is not revealing what is going on. And it's the ability to step back and say, okay, what is happening? Who's not, Who's not speaking? Someone is moving or acting a certain way. What is going on there and how do we actually reveal it? Any questions around that? Okay. So um, uh, the skills that we need, we need listening skills. Yeah, not only to individuals, but seeing the system. Increasing your peripheral vision and, and, and seeing what is happening. It's um, facilitation skills, your intuition, and your meta skills and being able to step in, revealing the system and stepping back and watching what happens and allowing the system to move and to, and, and to shift and to work. So, um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to stop sharing quickly. And um, again, we don't really have many faces. How many people could just go on to video? Yeah, and um, so if I ask you a couple questions, is um, and what I like to do is um, the question is going to be a simple one, and if you agree to it, I'd like you to put your hand up in front of of the screen, and if you don't agree to it, not to do it, <laughs> just and sit there. And um, what I would like all of you to do is to kind of. Don't look at the individuals, but look at what is happening from the system. Yeah, from the group. So how many of you like the meetup today? So and keep and keep your hand up. Yeah. Okay, interesting. How many of you wish it would be faster? Interesting. <laughs> so, um, so when, when you're revealing the system, you're saying, wow, did you see that? I'm seeing an interesting shift, but I'm seeing somebody else who maybe is not interested. What's happening here? And that's revealing the system. 
one person starts and the other wait a moment and then they agree to. Ah, so what was happening in the system? One starts and another follows. Mm -hmm. So is there, an, what type of impact does that have on the system? So I'm curious, what's happening here? I'm seeing staring faces. Again, everybody's on mute. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so if you can, you know, if I'm looking at all of everybody, and if all of you look at this, can see everyone, it's like, oh, wait, all staring faces. What is that? What does that mean? You know, what is going on? So that's revealing the system. It could be something simple. It could be we're just concentrating. <laughs> or maybe you like to hear my voice. Who knows? <laughs> Um, Pierre, do you have the video? Can we try that? So I'd like you to look at this video. It's a basketball game. It's in, um, uh, I think it was in Belgrade. And I'd like you to look at what happens system perspective and the motion. So we'll see if Pierre is able to share. And it's, it's, it'll just be a couple seconds. It's like a minute. Hopefully it works. It's not a question if Pierre. <laughs> okay. I guess hold on. Yeah. Andreas is back. Full screen. You can see my screen? Yes. Okay. You will have a lot of echo because it's a lot of noise. You get ready for noise. But watch what's happening in the As you see, there's a couple thousand people of individuals. But if you, you know, it's one powerful system moving. And it, this is the perspective that we want to see when we're looking from a, from a systemic perspective and starting to reveal what is really going on here in this system. You know, what, what is, what, what power is coming up also? What energy? What energy? Well, the emotion the Nova and the people, uh, they uh, celebrate, obviously, uh, uh, game and uh, this cultural energy and synchronizing all people doing the same thing. Exactly. And this is um, the systemic perspective that we're looking at. And if I, I'm going to reshare. And not only are we looking at it from revealing what's happening in the system, but what we're also doing is we're looking at what is the emotional field? You know, what is the energy? Because every single system has an energy. And um, it's the same thing, you step back, you take that meta view, you look at it from the system perspective, like we looked at the entire group from that basketball game. And you're reading the emotional energy in the system and you're normalizing it. You're bringing it out. And um, you're looking for the ups and downs, the ebbs and peaks. Um, as a basketball player, we love to take a basket and stop that noise, boom. <laughs> where the boom they don't speak anymore there's nothing and it's to reveal what is happening in the system i'm noticing that it's become really quiet what is happening here oh the energy just shifted what is what's going on um i'm i'm seeing in the group let's all stand up i'm seeing people are stuck in their chairs what is going on here so we're, re we're constantly revealing what is happening within the system. We need to increase our intuition, our awareness, our vision, and we need to really listen at different levels. We need to stand up and we need to see and feel what is going on and being aware of what's happening. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, 
I'm sure most of you have walked into a room and you felt it being absolutely heavy. How many of you guys have had that wonderful feeling? <laughs> like, oh God, what's going on here? <laughs> My first open space. I... <laughs> was it heavy? Yeah, it was very heavy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or you walk in and it's just dead quiet. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't breathe. If I breathe, they're going to hear it. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and we reveal it. System and coaches, we reveal what's happening in the system. Um, also, the, the high energy, the peaks of energy, you know, like this, this sport event. And, um, and it's really important. And what we do is we look for the block blockages. We look for hesitations in the group as a whole. We look for like an arc in the workshop where have you guys done a workshop and then you feel, ooh, I think we've gone too long. <laughs> I've lost everybody. <laughs> Maybe today. <laughs> and to know when you hit the peak, when it's going down, and also when to, when to stop not being said reading in between the lines trying to see what what is trying to come out and uh, and again this is another this is just a different stance but it's um, from a coaching perspective what we systemic coaching perspective we're not facilitating we're stepping back and we're seeing and we try we try it out and we say what's happening here and we step back and we we make this behavior it's okay it's just what's happening in the system. It's not a problem. So I, I'm curious, are, um, are, you, are you guys used to doing this type of thing? Is anybody used to doing that? Um, he's asking, what do you mean by doing this kind of things? Oh, okay. So um, do you walk into the room? And, um, and you see the group is working, but then you see, boom, the emotion drops. Do you just see it and say nothing? Or do you see it and say, wow, the emotion just drops? What happened here? Well, usually I don't interfere uh, because I don't want to uh, manipulate uh, the dynamics. Okay. okay. And, and being a system, a coach is not manipulating the dynamics. It's just revealing the system to itself. It's revealing? It's revealing the system to itself. And then the system sees what's happening. Mm -hmm. And takes it in or doesn't take it in. I have a problem with the word uh, system. Okay. Because when you speak about person, and uh, really I would say it's a group. Where system, I usually uh, use it for uh, for group, uh, not a group, but for elements which are not living. Yeah, you can. I would say trying to find whatever terminology works the best. People might say relationship. They might say system. They might say group. They might mm -hmm. say team. Yeah, I would okay. say what works best. Because you speak about systematic coaching, systemic coaching as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, there's also a choice of do you step in and try to shift it? Or do yeah. you just allow it and you reveal it? It's, it's how do we it's play a, with the energy in the room? Yeah, it is also a way to rebuild the system on its own. So you can identify what happened here is something you can bring another energy. In this, it's like sensing, uh, like feeling what's happening. You bring a new kind of energy. You see, if you have no bad feedback, then it's your, your approach is wrong. But usually it's also given feedback from the system. Mm -hmm. I, I, did, I did one, um, I was coaching a group, and you probably think it's really weird, but um, you know, we said we have a line. The group did not want to step over it you know, to make a commitment on something. But they said that's a commitment they want. And I actually went behind them and I said, let me help you. And I pushed the air. <laughs> and it was the weirdest thing because they then all stepped and jumped over. And they said, it was weird. We needed a push. Okay, I didn't touch them or anything. But it was just the, the energy of saying, 
let's go. So sometimes also as, as systemic coaches, we, we, we push people a little bit over these edges to, to move forward. Because sometimes they are, they're just stuck. But they want to go. <laughs> that's, the, that's the interesting part. So I'm, I'm curious from, if you guys want to come back from a, onto video, whoever can do it. If anyone else, there's some people who don't. So if you're looking at the whole group, I am curious from all of you, what is, what's the emotion that we have here right now? Yeah, so, so when you, when my you. Feedback would be, yeah? My feedback would be, don't ask for emotions after a long, long day. Uh, at 1936. <laughs> the arc, shall I say the arc is finished? I'm reading the emotional field. How many of you are ready to, to, to go eat and, and finish your day? <laughs> I'm feeling heaviness. I'm feeling, oh. <laughs> so um, I'm going to jump back because we're pretty much done. So what's important from revealing the emotional field um it's it's having the courage to reveal it you know it's listening skills it's um, increasing your perceptions of the space um using facilitation skills your intuition and having this meta view to see what is really happening here in fading out reading what's going on i'm a referee for basketball and there are times when they're going crazy so much, the energy is so high, I know I have to blow the whistle because it will become dangerous and I have to do it in a fair way. So I step in, I blow the whistle, the people stop, the energy calms, I step back and they're able to continue and compete in the same level. So it's, it's this type of reading that, that allows the system to understand itself. And that's a part of the, the skills. So um, to wrap up, um, I have gone over the um, design partnership. We've looked at um, revealing the system to itself and also um, you know, looking at um, revealing the emotion of the system. And, um, and I hope that um, there's some, some skills that we brought forward that maybe you will try in some of your coaching. And, um, and to see what happens and kind of let go and to, to watch the, the power and the beauty of, of a system. So thank you very much. And um, also, if you want any more information, uh, the book here, Creating Intelligent Teams, is, um, is really, it's very interesting. And it's, it's all about seeing this system as a, as a whole and the power of it and the, and the beauty of how it can be strong and, and move forward. So I hope you have enjoyed the session. I thank you so much, Virginia. Thank you. This was a great yeah. session. Yeah. Having you here and the newcomers uh, have a free welcome. And the people in the Heidelberg area, uh, I create a second meetup, which is linked here, but this will be mostly on site. This will be at the beginning just once a month is about service games is called Play 14 Heidelberg, right?